Um, I'm going to be very brief with regard to the presentation that we're making this evening. There's a means of set. There's a total of six suspects that have been arrested and detained in connection with the murder of the two individuals, Mr. Uh, Kinan Forbes, uh, also known as AKA, as well as Mr. Tabelo Motswane, uh, who's also known as TIPS. Uh, the incident that happened on the 10th of February in Florida, here in Devon. These six, they played different roles during the operation. We have a coordinator who is basically the master of everything, is in custody. We have um, two shooters that you also on, on social media. We have um, two spotters that were part, one of the spotters was inside the restaurant observing and watching Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Forbes and, 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 his, and his friends as well as the organizer of firearms and vehicles because the vehicle used as a getaway, firearms that were used to shoot, they all hired. As I said, the six of them, uh, the spotter initially followed uh, the uh, Mr. Forbes from the airport on arrival, all the way to the hotel, as well as uh, to the restaurant where the incident happened. And the, this person was also responsible for hiring, gathering resources together, the whole team together, as well as the the rewards that came thereafter when, when the people have done their job, the payments that was done. And the second suspect that we have is a person who supplied firearms and vehicles. And that person was also linked to other two murder cases, um, not, not these ones that, I, um, uh, that we're talking about. And the third one, it's a, it's, a sh it's a shooter who is linked to another murder case, another parallel murder case. We have another spotter, this was just outside the restaurant, who was also linked to another case. And we have a, another spotter who was outside Wish, who was linked to other two murder cases. And we have a shooter also as a sixth person who was linked with another murder case. In total of the exhibits that we've recovered thus far, it's a total of four vehicles as well as a firearm that was used uh, in a commission of crime, as well as cartridges that were picked up from the crime scene, crime scene that were linked with another crime scene where another shooting happened. The first vehicle, which is a, a Mercedes-Benz, was recovered on the 6th of March last year. And the second recovery was um, on the 22nd of April, and that was a firearm that was used to shoot and kill Mr. Forbes, specific. Uh, on the 23rd of June, the team identified after recovering these cartridges, they linked them together and were able to link that and confirm that they all involved, that firearm that was used was used in both medicines. A BMW was recovered on the 2nd of August. That's a vehicle that was trailing Mr. Forbes when he landed in, in KZN from the airport all the way to the hotel, all the way to the restaurant. A a grey I-10 I vehicle was recovered on the 20th of October last year. And on the 23rd, the last vehicle, which is Apollo, was recovered as well. So all these recoveries uh, were, were kept in police premises and uh, we processed them. The last two vehicles were hired from the owner uh, who rented these vehicles. So we took the statement from the owner. We, we, we've done all the necessary things, touched in A and, and everything that we needed on those cars. And we since released them to, to the owner because the owner just rented this vehicle out. So we've got all the evidence as the person who rented the cars. We have all the evidence and we're comfortable with, with, with that case. Timelines, as I've explained, on recoveries will also be uh, the same with arrests. The first arrest, or perhaps maybe before I explain the arrest, before the questions, the strategy that we employed was that after identifying these six, we're going to look for parallel cases that they are involved in. And we're going to arrest them on those cases and keep them in custody. But don't charge them on the case that we're investigating, the main case 85 uh, of, of, of uh, February last year which happened in Florida. So the reason, the reason for that is because we wanted to make sure that we get almost all the suspects, um, especially the organizer of the hit. 
So after identifying everyone else, and we could realize that of the four, of the six suspects, at least four of them, we have parallel cases that we can link them with. So we started pursuing those parallel cases. One of them was the case that was talked about in the media where we went to Cape Town and we arrested someone in Cape Town. I'm sure you might have heard about it. And we brought them back here. We charged a person on a parallel case, but the very same person was linked to this case. But we didn't charge him on the case. Um, so we went on with, with the rest of these arrests that we effected. The first one being the 22nd of April, where the organizer of firearms and vehicles, the person who was renting this out, uh, was arrested and was charged on, on uh, different cases, as well as uh, most recently he's now been uh, uh, linked to this one of, of uh, case 85. On the 24th of October, that's when we effected our second arrest. Um, this was a spotter who was arrested also being involved in murder in another case uh, that, that happened except the one that you're talking about. On the 14th of December, we arrested the third suspect. Uh, and that suspect was also linked with another murder case that happened in Mazim Toti, including, uh, we, but we did not charge on this one that we're talking about today. On the 24th of February, maybe let me explain this one. After identifying the two suspects that we're looking for after chasing them the whole year, we found the house where they were hiding in Swaziland. So through information, we could spot them and we got informers to tell them and give us their photos and we could confirm they were about. So because we wanted to follow the law, and, and um, I like South African media because you tend to understand now the law that we can't be talking about things that are still in court especially when individuals have not been charged. So in this case, we approached the NPA, an affidavit was prepared, and we submitted through Interpol in order to request the authorities in Swaziland to help us catch these two. These two were arrested on Saturday morning in Swaziland for other cases, as I've spoken about, including the one that we're talking about. However, when we were talking about the other parallel cases, it's simple because we did not want to scare the very last two that we're still looking for. We had warrant of arrest for the last two, uh, which is the main guy that without him, this case would not have been strong. Uh, we needed to, to get that one behind bars. So after getting these two on Saturday, we're told that they found them. Uh, we did not communicate that as has been the case throughout that you're not communicating it. We did not communicate on Saturday. We did not communicate on, on Sunday. On Monday, we had on our position warrant of arrest of the last two. Unfortunately, the news broke out. So when the news broke out, the very last suspect we were looking for went on a run because the news were out and they realized that the people that they thought were hiding that side, they, they, they're now running away, that they've been arrested. So they, they ought to run. So the team worked 24-7, uh, uh, 24 hours looking for them. Uh, and uh, that was from from Monday until early hours of this morning when, when the, uh, the lawyers came to us and they said, okay, they're going to hand themselves over because we were hunting them and we had warrant of arrest. So this afternoon, they then uh, um, were arrested and, and charged on the same case 85. One of uh, these this suspects that are in custody, that, that will amount into a total of, of six suspect that we are we're looking for four of them are here and and two of them are, are not here yet because we're still busy with the legal process that we cannot uh, engage on now because involves many many parties so that's basically all timelines in terms of what has happened from last year uh, uh, april up until now thanks so much trying to think what to make of this story because uh, we were told that this is a wrong story when the media actually reported that the killers of aka have been found in eswatini and then the commissioner of police in guazulu natal well i think i kind of get it why he had to say what he said considering what he just said this evening regarding the uh, the breaking news and the other people found out that they're actually being uh sought after and so maybe that is why he had to lie and say no 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 this is for murders that has absolutely nothing to do with aka 
but something still tells me that no mm -mm, something is amiss here but you know what let's give this a benefit of the doubt and hope that this time around the police are actually having the correct people that are going to be held accountable for the death of aka as well as his friend tips so right now i am just a little bit skeptical i don't want to lie but at the same time let's watch and see where all this is going and we'll be able to tell if the police are lying because uh, the last thing that we have learned about them is that uh, there's a chance that south africans may be taking a rap of things they did not commit so let's see with these ones let's see definitely the whole six of them even the mastermind i wonder who that person and for what purposes that aka had to die because from what i think i understood they said that uh i think one of them confessed or they handed themselves over to the police because they realized they've been sought after a lawyer was involved let's see how all of this transpires i am so interested so the question that i'm asking myself which i would like you to leave in the comment section where should i bring this story to clan the clan or take it to my true crime youtube channel which is the iron bars and there already the type of pesta matter is taking traction or is gaining traction so if uh, i put the aka story there as well we'll see how it all goes so guys we'll be watching and definitely we will be coming back to you with updates i understand the extradition uh, hearing is going to be on thursday in eswadini hopefully they are going to broadcast it and then I think from that point we'll be able to tell what's going on right now everything is still sketchy even in my head is still sketchy but my intuitions are saying nah, <laughs> something is going on but we'll find out so anyways guys please make sure you leave anyways guys please make sure that you don't leave this video without liking also subscribe if you are interested in me following this uh case all the way to the bitter end.